tonight, a hostage rescued more than three weeks after being kidnapped by Hamas. You'll see the emotional reunion, the alarming scene, an angry mob surrounding a plane on the tarmac looking for Jewish passengers. And in the U.S. tonight, the FBI investigating the new threats, including concerns at Cornell. Tonight, that Israeli soldier rescued from Hamas, Israel, now saying saved during the ground operation in Gaza. Tonight, that reunion with her family as Hamas now releases a video appearing to show three women hostages pleading for their release. Inside Gaza, thousands of Palestinian civilians breaking into a U.N. aid warehouse, desperate there for supplies. The chilling images emerging around the world now, that mob storming the tarmac, searching for passengers who are Jewish. Ian Panel in Israel tonight. Here in the U.S., the FBI investigating growing threats here at home, including threatening posts targeting Jewish students at Cornell University. Stephanie Ramos reporting. The alarming discovery at a theme park in Colorado. Police say the body of a man was found inside the park, heavily armed, carrying explosive devices and wearing body armor. Was there a warning before the mass shooting in Maine? A sheriff reportedly sending an alert to all law enforcement in the state weeks before the attack. Tonight, the six-week strike against the big three American automakers is now over. What the workers will now get. In Colorado tonight, the trial begins. Will former President Trump be kept off the ballot there? A group arguing his role on January 6th disqualifies him from holding office. The Halloween deep freeze, temperatures plunging into the 20s and 30s. The freeze alerts from the west all the way to the northeast. And what we've now learned tonight about actor Matthew Perry as the tributes now pour in. And tonight here, Matthew Perry in his own words. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to start another week with all of you at home. And we begin tonight with the Israeli soldier rescued. Israel says by ground forces in Gaza. Tonight, here are the images, the emotional reunion. And it comes as Hamas now releases images of three more Israeli women being held inside Gaza, pleading for their release. Private Ori Megadish back with her family tonight after three weeks held captive by Hamas. Video of the emotional reunion posted tonight by the Israeli government. It comes as Hamas releases those images, three more hostages. It's believed they're still holding more than 200 hostages, including Americans. Meantime tonight, Israel's ground troops moving deeper into Gaza. Prime Minister Netanyahu defending the operation. A Palestinian journalist recording what appears to be an Israeli tank firing toward a car as it tried to turn around to get away. And the growing desperation for Palestinian civilians as conditions deteriorate. Some getting into a UN facility where aid is stored, desperate for supplies. And the chilling images circulating online from around the world tonight an angry mob storming a tarmac, searching for passengers who are Jewish at an airport in the Russian region of Dagestan. And tonight, here at home, the FBI now investigating the growing threats right here in the U.S., including new concern at Cornell University. We begin with ABC's chief foreign correspondent, Ian Panel, leading us off tonight from Israel. Tonight, an Israeli soldier kidnapped by Hamas over three weeks ago, rescued and reunited with her family. Video of emotional scenes and celebrations posted by the Israeli government, showing Private Ori Megiddish reunited with her grandmother. The young soldier was saved during Israel's incursion into Gaza. The military saying she's undergone a medical examination and her condition is good. But today, officials confirming the death of Shani Luke, the 23-year-old German-Israeli who was kidnapped from that music festival. It comes after Hamas released video today claiming to show three more women hostages seen here in this image. ABC News won't show the full video. In it, the women plead for their release. The father of 44-year-old Daniel Aloni, seen in the middle, saying his heart almost stopped when he saw the video, but he felt relief to see her alive. Speaking to ABC News, former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. Ron Derma, who sits on the Israeli war cabinet as an observer, telling me U.S. military planners have helped shape the battle plan. We can learn from them, have a better operational plan, but we're doing it very, very deliberately, very, very carefully, because we know the dangers of that type of urban warfare. Israel today pushing deeper into Gaza, deploying additional forces, including infantry. Palestinian journalists reporting Israeli tanks are now near Gaza City. One reporter filming as what appears to be an Israeli tank fires towards a car as it tries to turn away. We could see Israeli tanks and explosions inside Gaza today. 
We met Zoe, a 30-year-old sommelier turned soldier called to duty after the October 7th attack. We don't want to fight. We want peace, but right now we don't have any choice. Is there fear? Fear among the troops? Of course, no one go to war with a smile on the face. On the ground in Gaza, a humanitarian crisis unfolding, with limited aid getting in and under bombardment. The suffering of civilians shows no end in sight. Up to 600 Americans still trapped in Gaza, including Abu Dokal, his wife and their one-year-old son from Massachusetts. They've been in touch with the State Department since the war began 24 days ago. We're staying hopeful that tonight uh, will be another safe night for us. Um, at this point, we, um, we don't care much about how intense the bombing is, um, as long as we come out alive in the morning. And with this war spreading for the first time, Israelis targeted outside Israel. An angry pro-Palestinian mob storming the airport terminal and tarmac in Dagestan, Russia, after a flight landed from Israel, looking for Jewish passengers, shouting anti-Semitic slurs. Israel now telling its citizens not to travel to the region. And so let's bring in Ian Panel back with us again tonight. Ian, the Biden administration has said it remains concerned about the very obvious risk that this conflict could escalate with others in the region tonight. You're learning of new attacks on U.S. targets. Yeah, that's right, David. The Pentagon's revealing that there were three more attacks on U.S. facilities in Syria. This is by Iranian-backed militants. This is just over the last two days. No U.S. casualties or damage, but this is now the 23rd attack in Iraq and Syria, as you say, amid these fears of regional escalation. Meanwhile, Israel striking in both Lebanon and Syria, with Ambassador Derma telling me in that interview that if Hezbollah joins this war, Israel is going to strike back hard. David. Our chief foreign correspondent, Ian Panel, leading us off from Tel Aviv. Ian, thank you. Meantime, back here in the U.S. tonight, there is growing concern over threats here at home. Tonight, the FBI is now investigating threatening posts targeting Jewish students at Cornell University. Here's ABC's Stephanie Ramos tonight. Tonight, New York State Police guarding the Jewish Student Center at Cornell University. The FBI now investigating after a slew of disturbing online posts threatened violence against Jewish students. I was afraid for my community members' lives and for the well-being and mental health of all of, all of my students and all of my, my friends and peers. The university president alerting the FBI of a potential hate crime after the messages were posted on a website unaffiliated with the school. Governor Kathy Hochul meeting with students today saying anti-Semitism will not be tolerated. No one should be afraid to walk from their dorm or their dining hall to a classroom. Anti-Semitic hate crimes in the U.S. already reached record highs before the Hamas attacks on October 7th, up 25 percent last year. Dealing with the current threat requires that law enforcement evaluate online activity, they track online activity, uh, and they take seriously threats directed at the Jewish community, the Muslim community. In New York City, a man punched a woman in the face at Grand Central Terminal, allegedly because she was Jewish. And in Illinois today, the landlord charged with fatally stabbing this six-year-old Muslim boy 26 times and seriously injuring his mother, pleading not guilty to murder and hate crime charges. Prosecutors say Joseph Shuba was motivated by his hatred of Muslims. David, tonight the Department of Homeland Security warns there may be more anti-Semitic and Islamophobic hate attacks here in the U.S. Officials think those threats will increase as this conflict continues. David. All right, Stephanie Ramos reporting here in New York. Stephanie, thank you. Tonight in Colorado, an alarming discovery at a theme park there. Police say a man's body was found at Glenwood Caverns Adventure Park, 150 miles west of Denver. Authorities say he was heavily armed, carrying explosive devices and wearing body armor. They believe he may have killed himself rather than carrying out an attack. From Maine tonight, after the mass shooting in Lewiston, Governor Janet Mills now promising an investigation into missed signals before that state's deadliest mass shooting. The suspect, Robert Card, allegedly threatened an Army Reserve Center in Saco, Maine, weeks before the attack. A sheriff reportedly sending an alert to law enforcement across that state. Some officers have said they did not receive it. ABC News was first to report that Card also tried buying a silencer in August, but was denied after admitting on the paperwork he'd been committed to a mental institution. Tonight, the governor ordering flags to remain at half staff for an additional 18 days until November 17th, one day for each of the 18 victims. 
We turn now to the strike against the big three automakers in this country. The United Auto Workers announcing a deal tonight with General Motors, tentatively ending the strike against all three. Tonight, what those workers will now get. Here's our chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis now. Tonight, breaking the stalemate, General Motors and the United Auto Workers Union reaching an agreement. We're officially suspending our stand-up strike against each of the big three. GM, the final holdout, now joining Ford and Stellantis, the maker of Jeep, which made deals with the UAW this past week. After a brutal and costly six-week strike, this is what the auto workers are getting. A 25% wage increase over the next four and a half years, with 11% immediately coming once the deal is signed. A cost of living adjustment and boost to retirement income, including 401k contributions. We need this wage increase. Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving, the new year. That, that, that'll help. The bitter 40 day battle between the UAW and the big three cost the industry an estimated $9.3 billion. And David, while the strike is over, the workers still need to vote to ratify the deals. David? Rebecca Jarvis with us tonight here. Rebecca, thank you. In Colorado tonight, will former President Trump be kept off the ballot there? This evening, the trial has begun. A group arguing Trump's role on January 6th disqualifies him from holding office. Here's ABC senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky now. Tonight, an unprecedented trial is underway in a Colorado court where a group of six current and former Republican voters is trying to keep Donald Trump off the ballot, arguing he engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution on January 6th in violation of the 14th Amendment. Trump's own words that day played in court. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. The plaintiffs calling to the witness stand Capitol Police Officer Daniel Hodges and playing video showing him crushed in a doorway by rioting Trump supporters. I was overwhelmed by members of the mob. I was held there while um, one of the assailants attempted to gouge out my eye. And um, I was able to repel the attackers um, and we were forced to retreat. The plaintiff's case rests on the 14th Amendment, originally written to disqualify people who fought for the Confederacy from serving in government. This is the first time it's being invoked to disqualify a president from running for office again. Trump incited a violent mob to attack our capital, to stop the peaceful transfer of power under our Constitution. And we are here because Trump claims, after all that, he has the right to be president again. Plaintiff's lawyers playing Trump's message to the crowd. We're going to walk down and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down. We're going to walk down anyone you want. But I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. But Trump's lawyers today arguing the former president did not actually walk down to the Capitol as he said he would. Frankly, President Trump didn't engage. He didn't carry a pitchfork to the Capitol grounds. He didn't lead a charge. He didn't get in a fist fight with legislators. Trump's team dismissing the lawsuit as election interference. A similar case is going to be heard this week in Minnesota. There's another one in Michigan and another set for New Hampshire. Ultimately, David, this seems destined for the U.S. Supreme Court, which has a conservative majority, though in the past that's been no guarantee of rulings in favor of Donald Trump. David. Aaron Gutersky here with us tonight. Aaron, thank you. We turn now to the death of actor Matthew Perry. We're learning more about Perry's final hours. He was found dead at his home on Saturday. And tonight, just in here, his co-stars on Friends issuing a joint statement as fans of Friends around the world remember Chandler. Here's Kena Whitworth. Tonight, the investigation is underway after the death of Matthew Perry as fans around the world mourn the sudden passing of the actor who brought them so many laughs on the show Friends. I'm Chandler, I make jokes when I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> on Saturday, the LA Fire Department racing to Perry's LA home after sources say his assistant found the 54-year-old actor unresponsive in his jacuzzi and called 911. Requesting two additional units and a supervisor respond to Bluefield Drive. ABC News confirming an autopsy has been completed, but the cause of death is unknown and a toxicology report could take weeks. Sources telling ABC News the morning of his death, Perry played his favorite game of pickleball. <laughs> I've had a very long, hard day. He skyrocketed to fame as the lovable, wisecracking Chandler Bing on the mega hit show Friends. You know, I don't dance at weddings. 
because weddings are a great place to meet women. And when I dance, I look like this. <laughs> His razor sharp wit and quick comebacks charming the audience for 10 years. All right, when was 1990? <laughs> okay, you have to stop the Q-tip when there's resistance. You know, I really need to organize my thoughts. Your thoughts? Plural? <laughs> but behind the scenes, he was in the throes of ravaging addiction. Last year, opening up to our Diane Sawyer about just how bad it got. 55 Viking in a day, which is where I was. 55. Yeah. And I guess the weirdest thing I did was on Sundays, I would go to open houses and go to the bathrooms in the, so, in the open house and see what pills they had in there and steal them. And I think they thought, well, there's no way that Chandler came in and stole from us. Perry estimated he'd been in detox 65 times over the years, surviving 14 surgeries and a coma. And he opened up about that struggle in his brutally candid memoir with the hopes of helping others with their recovery. Your disease is just outside, just doing one arm push-ups, just waiting, just waiting for you, waiting to get you alone. Because alone, you lose to the disease. And now I finally feel okay and feel like I've got some strength. Tonight, Perry's friends castmates telling People Magazine, we are all so utterly devastated by the loss of Matthew. We were more than just castmates. We are family. Adding, there's so much to say, but right now we're going to take a moment to grieve and process this unfathomable loss. And now, David, the LAPD's most experienced team of investigators has taken over this case. They say there's no signs of trauma or foul play, but add it will take several weeks before the exact cause of death is known. David. Kena Whitworth tonight in Los Angeles. Kena, thank you. And later tonight here, there was one more thing Matthew Perry told Diane about uh, his own bravery, how he hoped his own struggle, his honesty would help others. Matthew Perry in his own words a little later here. And when we come back here tonight, the police chase, the suspect allegedly throwing explosive devices from the car. Also, the new warning from Panera tonight involving one of their drinks, now at the center of an FDA investigation. And the Halloween deep freeze, the temperatures plunging from the west all the way to the northeast, the forecast in a moment. Tonight, to the concerns over artificial intelligence, President Biden now issuing the federal government's first regulations targeting AI, signing an executive order guarding against the risks of the rapidly changing technology. Major tech companies will need government approval for some products now, and the Commerce Department will create labels identifying AI-generated content. Tonight, a dangerous police chase in San Francisco, a suspect allegedly tossing explosive devices out of the car, leading police over the Bay Bridge. Authorities say the suspect attacked someone inside a church. Police say he then threw at least two explosives. He was later arrested on the other side of the bridge. No one seriously hurt. When we come back, 85 million Americans under freeze alerts for Halloween. The forecast in a moment. To the index, 85 million Americans in more than two dozen states under freeze alerts for Halloween. Temperatures plunging into the 20s and 30s tonight from Arizona to the northeast. Below freezing, Nashville, Chicago, Pittsburgh. Daytime highs, 40s and 50s from Washington to Philadelphia to New York. Panera Bread has now added a warning for its highly caffeinated charged lemonade. It comes after a family claims their daughter died consuming the energy drink, saying she had a heart condition and wasn't aware of how much caffeine it contained. The new warning says the drink is not recommended for children or people sensitive to caffeine. When we come back, Matthew Perry in his own words, his hope after being so honest. ABC World News Tonight with David Muir, sponsored by Vivgard and Vivgard Hytrulo. Finally tonight here, actor Matthew Perry, what he told Diane, his hope that his honesty would help others. Tonight, actor Matthew Perry, in his own words, what he told Diane about his hope that sharing his own struggle might help others. For some reason, it's obviously because I was on Friends, more people will listen to me. So I've got to take advantage of that. I've got to help as many people as I can. When someone calls you for help and says, I'm in trouble, what do you want to say to them first? I say, come over. Let's talk. This isn't fun, you know? You, you're very nice, and being interviewed by you is great, but, like, it's not fun to talk about this stuff. I don't, I don't like talking about it, but 
I know it's going to help people to talk about it. I know the book is going to help people. And you know this, I think, probably, but you know every single person says, tell him he's got us with him. Oh, yeah, thank you. I'm very grateful for that. Fans of Matthew Perry around the world tonight are with him. I'm David Muir. Thanks for watching. I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Good night. When it matters most, America turns to David Muir and ABC's World News Tonight.